You have reached Atheist Republic voicemails. God may not be listening to you, but the citizens of the Atheist Republic are. Leave us a voicemail on atheistrepublic.com for a chance to have your message broadcast to our followers worldwide. Send us your opinions, stories, advice, or concerns. Together, we'll build a platform for atheist voices all around the globe. Hi there to all my Muslim fellow atheists. This is Alice from Canada, and I just wanted to let you know that you are not alone. We are many and we are strong. Together, we can change the world and liberate it from the chains of religious dogma, man-made doctrines and blind submittance without questioning. I really appreciate and honor the courage of each of you who proved his and her strength, integrity and intellectual honesty by finally realizing that you have been lied to since you were a child. I'd like to express my deep respect to you for being able to look behind the lies that you've been told. For it is so much easier to just accept the truth that you've been told to be the truth than to put some effort in questioning your belief system, to inquire critically and to open it to scrutiny and to be able to finally realize that you've been wrong. What you've achieved and accomplished is so great. You really can be so, so proud of yourself. I am so proud of you. So please move on and keep your head up high. We in the Western countries need you as much as you need us. You are not alone. Hello, my name is Nasir Mohammed, and I am 16 years old and I'm a recently deconverted Muslim. To put it plainly, I was never religious to begin with. I belonged to a bizarre sect of Islam called the Nation of Islam, and quite frankly, I never really believed, I never really felt the spiritual aspect of what the nation taught. I was always skeptical. I never really enjoyed getting up on a Sunday morning to go to the mosque to listen to a lecture. I didn't really enjoy having to put on a suit on a Saturday morning to go to a boy's training class from 9 in the morning until 12 p.m. I just didn't enjoy it. When I was 6 and 7 years old, I was fascinated with astronomy and cosmology, how the universe began, how the universe functions, the different things that govern our universe today, and to put it mildly, the teachings in the Nation of Islam directly contradict what is told, what is shared in the science books and the science journals and things like that. For example, um, whereas in the Nation of Islam, people they'll say that humans have been living with God for 66 trillion years in the science books they'll say that everything we know in the universe started out in singularity that expanded 13 billion years ago and that humans didn't come around until 350,000 years ago and that's frankly being generous when i brought that up to my parents they gave me a rather different cop-out answer they said not to trust science because scientists aren't as perfect as they thought they were but i still took it at face value if had i known then what I know now, I would have known that it's just a bizarre cop out. It's just a cop out that just means stop asking hard questions. Now, fast forward seven years, and I identify as an agnostic. And I, even though I was like ninety five percent sure that God wasn't real, I was still willing to acknowledge the possibility that there might be a God out there. And so I was more of I would say that I was more of an agnostic, but I was still an atheist because I didn't know that an atheist was someone that just wasn't convinced of God's existence. At the time, I just wasn't convinced that there was a God that existed in light of the absence of evidence for him and even the evidence that says that he isn't real and that the Bible and the Quran aren't true. And it took me a while, but in my 11th grade year, 
I was in AP Human Geography, and my teacher, who was a hardline Christian, brought up the idea of morality and how atheists and agnostics can't justify morality. Like, for example, he brought up, my teacher brought up the example, when is it ever okay to rape a child? And I didn't know the answer to the question, of course. What I was meaning to say, I didn't really have an answer to the question, but at the time, what I was trying to say was, there are some things that are so widely agreed upon, they may as well be objective, but there isn't any such thing as objective morality. But as I've grown older, I've read books like The Moral Landscape and God is Not Great and The God Delusion, and I have really begun to appreciate the world around me without the need to invoke a divine creator. I would like to have a section on your website that recommends books for various age children. So, for example, I have a seven-year-old son who would benefit from reading books that support an atheist viewpoint. So it would be nice if you could have you know, a tab or a section on your website that does that. Thank you. Hi, this is Armin Navobi from Atheist Republic, and I just wanted to respond to the previous voicemail and say that there is actually a section on the website for resources for atheist parents. So if you actually go to atheistrepublic.com and then click on resources on the menu bar at the top, and you will find that there's a section called resources for atheist parents, and there's a lot of recommendations there that you can select from books and other resources. Hope that helps. Hello, my name is Gareth, and I'm an atheist from Canada. When I was younger, I was taught that the Bible was true and evolution was not. But I grew up, and I realized how backwards that was, and now I hold the truth to be very important to me. It's not fun to have to choose between your honest estimation of the truth and what the people around you want to hear. I know what it's like to lose respect and friendship for committing to the truth, but I can only imagine what it's like to have to fear for my life because of it. This message is for those of you who choose truth in the face of danger. If you live in a country where leaving religion is a crime, or if you feel threatened in your community or family for not sharing its dominant beliefs, I want you to know that you're not alone, there is hope, and your persistence is a huge inspiration to me. Hearing these stories from people like you, it gives me courage, and I know that I'm not the only one. In the West, I get called insensitive, arrogant, Islamophobic, but that's as bad as it gets. And as long as atheists are being targeted and hurt and killed around the world, silencing myself, it would feel like a betrayal to those of you who can't speak out for yourselves. So to you, I just want to show my great support, and I hope to one day share a world with you where rejecting harmful, outdated beliefs is safe for everyone. But until then, just be safe and take care of yourself. Hello, I'm Mohammed al Qadra. I live in Jordan. I'm an ex-Muslim. I have been an atheist for about five years now, and I've been through all kind of shit because of this, whether it's about losing relationships or reaching the point where you go to college and you are the only open atheist in campus, so nobody, and I mean nobody, can give you any look or any attention or speak up to you. You spent two years all by yourself and all you have is the hope that eventually the day will end and you'll go back and chat up with people online who are like-minded than to eventually know that you're a part of something so big and so international and there is a local community inside of Jordan 
and I'm honored to be able to create that and to let people in Jordan meet face to face for the first time. And now when I see the results, people having those friends who I once needed, I sense uh, a feeling of fulfillment. And though the struggle keeps going on, it's not just based on the problems of company and of like-minded friends. There's bullshit all around us. And there are extremists. There are people who are trying to take over the West and the East. And while those are advancing their agenda, it is we, the people who decide that this is all a myth of history, who will eventually triumph and make the truth be heard. Thank you for giving us a voice, Atheist Republic. Hello, my name is Sina Ansari Far. I'm an Iranian refugee fleeing religious persecution. Me and my wife came to Turkey in 2013 fleeing persecutions. My wife as a Christian and me as an atheist. I'm a musician and I love hard rock and metal music. And my job is so, yeah, I do tailoring and alterations. And my wife is a painter, some sort of artist. I got arrested after I went to an underground concert in summer 2013, which Iran's police had me detained for almost a week. And under pressure of interrogations and torture, both emotionally and physically, they found out that I'm an atheist. And as you know, in Iran, the penalty for apostasy is death. Mm, although my story is much, much longer than that and much more complicated as well. And I need hours to explain the situation as I did in several interviews that I had with UNSCR to get my approval for my refugee status. I met my wife here in Turkey the second day I came here. It was love in the first sight. And after about nine months dating, dating, we got married. Since 2013, I had three interviews with UNHCR and my wife also had three interviews with them in a two years period. After the interviews last year in November 2015, they recognized us as refugees. And since then, we have been waiting for them to send our applications to a third country for resettlement. After a year, in November 2016, finally they called us and told us that they are going to send our applications to some organizations in Istanbul, which we refugees call it ICMC, for resettlement in the U.S. But... It didn't take that much long, and President Donald Trump signed the executive order, as you know, and shut the program down. Since the order, UNHCR and ICMC have shut down all the works they do in the process of resettling refugees. UNHCR didn't even send us send our applications to them. Everything just simply stopped. In fact, I have friends that they had a certain date for interviews with DHS officers, but after the executive order, they all got canceled as well. We simply have nobody to talk about our situation, and all we can do is wait, wait, and wait in uncertain circumstances, which is really, really frustrating. Living in Turkey, especially in our town, which is very small, and people have very religious minds. It's very hard and tough. Even my wife, who is a Christian, considering all the people here are Muslim, I'm saying that. I even kicked out of my two previous jobs when they found that I'm that I'm not Muslim. 
I couldn't learn earn money with music in Turkey, so I went and worked for a tailor so I can learn how to saw without even get paid for three or four months so I can provide for me and my family. My father often sent me some money from Iran, but it's not just enough. They have enough problems in Iran for themselves. I had to work, so I tried everything from washing cars and carpets to working in bakery and carpeting in these three and a half, almost four years that I have been here in Turkey. At the moment, they find out that you are not Muslim. That's it. They're just simply done with you. At first, they try to make you Muslim, and when they find out that you were Muslim once, that's a whole different story for them. It's just like Iran. Nothing is different when it comes to Islam. They look at us as we are on our way to hell somehow. <laughs> for now, we're just hanging on and cross our fingers and trying to have hope. I believe in humanity, and I believe that good always wins. Right, this is my third attempt at this, and I'm, I'm certain to get it right this time. So I'm a British-born, Australian-raised female, presently living in the in beautiful Colorado, uh, United States. Um, my background, I'm a teacher, basically, a teacher of English, language, arts, literature, et cetera, et cetera. I was christened at Church of England as a baby. I do recall a um, really awful time when I was forced to be an altar servant in what I would say is a cold and awful church. And it, quite frankly, I've never been to a church and I've been in many and I've been in many all over the world where uh, I thought, wow, this is such a wonderful, warm and welcoming place. Churches have always uh, felt very cold to me. Uh, so it wasn't a place that I wanted to spend a large proportion of my time anyway. Uh, then my mother decided she wanted to believe in ghosts and spiritualism, reincarnation, and raised us to believe that I was going to come back as another person one day to make up for all those terrible sins I'd committed in this life and um, and that there were dead people walking around the house at any given moment, which is uh, wonderful. It helps you sleep at night for sure. After that, she went into astrology, and my mood was dictated by where the moon was Um and what my future could hold for me was based on what astrology said, uh, based on the 12 constellations that she was reading from, even though we now know there were 14 constellations, which would completely throw her ephemeris out the, out the door. After that, I met the man of my dreams. Oh, my gosh, this is it. This is the one. And uh, he was Catholic. And I thought, well, I'll give it a go. I've tried everything else. Why not? Then again, I didn't try everything else. It was forced on me. I was indoctrinated from a young child. Fortunately for me, I'm a rather rebellious person, so I do tend to reject what I don't truly, wholly and solely believe. So I became um, someone who attended a Catholic church. It, I converted to Catholicism, uh, actually quite a traumatizing experience in itself. And it was the Vatican I church, not the modern Catholic church. And the Vatican I church is... Well, I, I admire their discipline. I can tell you that I, I can admire their their dedication and their discipline, but it certainly wasn't for me. And eventually I did turn away from it. Uh, today, I try not to refer to myself as an atheist. I'm just a non-believer. I just don't believe in anything. Uh, I think the best thing you can do in your life is be, number one, as honest as you can be with yourself and from that point, I thought, well, at no point ever in my entire life have I ever believed in something greater than myself uh, as far as a God uh, or that there were different beings or other dimensions that were determining or my future or looking over me. I've just never believed anything. I think just the fact that we're alive is, is enough. It's fabulous being alive. The world is brilliant just as it is without having to uh, give credit to um, to some sort of deity. So I did join a couple of the atheist websites and I became very disappointed, to be honest, because of how uh, disrespectful a number of the contributors were to people who do believe. I think we must understand that people be have beliefs for many different reasons and we don't do a non-believer any favours by humiliating or attacking people who do believe. I don't don't know that you achieve anything by mocking any system. Some people have never been given the opportunity to consider anything else. Some people 
have never been given an education which gave them the skills of critical thinking to believe in anything else. And I don't think that um, the atheist movement does itself any favours when we attack. I think we have to be intelligent. We have to be tolerant. And if we do come across someone who is a strong believer, who contributes to an atheist site, rather than attacking them or saying to them, well, what are you doing on our website then? I think we need to show them, hey, look, we're intelligent. We're critical thinkers. We're very tolerant. And sure, we're, we're happy to exchange ideas and let you see our perspective. Anyway, that's basically uh, my bit for this website. I think it's a great website and it'll be what I'll be listening to in my hour and 10 minute drive to work every morning. Thanks very much. Cheers. Please consider supporting us by sharing the podcast with your fellow heathens or donating by going to AtheistRepublic.com and clicking on support. Subscribe to Atheist Republic voicemails on iTunes, Stitcher or your favorite podcast app. And please leave us a review.